In this video, we'll be looking at a previous question based on protein synthesis uh, that is found in the chapter DNA, the code of life. So let's look at the diagram and then at some of the questions that they've asked. So the diagram below shows one stage of protein synthesis. So we know that protein synthesis is actually made up of two sta stages. The first one being transcription and then the second being transcription translation. Now how I, I taught my learners to remember which one comes first is the fact that transcription has a C, translation has an L, so C comes before L in the alphabet that means C takes place first, so transcription takes place first. Now looking at this diagram they could possibly ask you to identify what stage we are looking at and I can already say that this is translation that we are looking at based off that tRNA that we can see there. So tRNA only occurs in translation and is only found in the cytoplasm and not in the nucleus uh, where transcription takes place. And then we can see that they've also given us an mRNA strand, they've given us amino acids, these grayish rectangular blocks numbered one to five. So they can possibly ask us to identify that. So let's look at the questions uh, and see what they want to know. So the table below shows five codons and their corresponding amino acids. So they've provided us with the amino acids uh, corresponding with the codon. So the codon is mRNA. So that means that we'll be using this strand to link it to the amino acid and not tRNA. So remember tRNA brings in the amino acid and in this case they want to know what the mRNA is and they can do that. They can give you the codon and expect you to work it back uh, to the codon or they can give you the anticodon or they can give you the DNA and they could give you the specific sequence of DNA in this table and then you would have to work it to the codon and then to the anticodon. Because remember, we always start off with the DNA strand. The DNA strand is then copied by the mRNA strand, which is then copied by the tRNA that brings in a specific amino acid to build a specific protein based off of that uh, original message from the DNA. So they can give you any one of these three in the table and you would have to know in what order to change those nitrogenous bases to get to the correct sequence. So just as an example and just stay with me here, let's say with the DNA they've given you C, C, G, then you would have to take it to mRNA. The C always bonds with guanine and the guanine will always bond with cytosine. And then from there you could take it to the tRNA which would be guanine with cytosine always. There's two of those and then the cytosine with guanine. How I remember it is remembering good couple. So the G is for guanine, the C is for cytosine. So cytosine always goes with guanine making a good couple. Adenine um, always and together thymine so adenine and thymine are always together and this is in the DNA strand only remember when we get to RNA adenine will bond with uracil that thymine is replaced with uracil just a quick refresher there uh, so remember that now let's look at the questions 2.2.1 says identify or asks identify the stage of protein synthesis represented in the diagram above. Now we've already done that and we've identified it as translation. If they ask you to provide a reason, you could say the presence of tRNA. 2.2.2 say asks, name the stage of protein synthesis that is not shown in the diagram above. We know that would then be transcription. Then for question two, they want to know, use the information in the table to identify the amino acid, uh, acids numbered one and four respectively. So they want to know one and four. And to get the amino acid, we need to have the 
codon. So let's look at number one first. This is actually the easiest one and the reason I say that is uh, they've shown us two and three and where they are bonded to. So that means that number one would fit on this first slot here on that mRNA strand. So that means the codon that we are looking for is CCU. Remember we read it in threes, those nitrogenous bases. So CCU, it's already on the codon, so we can just go look for CCU on the table. There it is way at the bottom, and the amino acid there is proline. So number one is proline. Next one, number four. Now, number four would slot in right next to number three so that it means it would go into this space over here. Do we have the code on here? No, but we have enough information to answer this question because they've provided us with the anticodon. So the anticodon here, let's write it down, is CCU. Now we need to have the codon which means we need to take it back one step. So we know that on the codon, the cytosine of the anticodon would have been paired with the guanine on the codon. Let me just draw a line there so you can see the separation between the two. So that one is done. The second cytosine on the anticodon would have bonded with the guanine on the codon. And then the uracil would have bonded with an adenine. So the codon that we are looking for here is GGA. So let's go look for it. There it is second, and that would be glycine. So number four is glycine. And they could have asked you number five as well. So number five could have slotted in there. We don't have the codon for that one, but we have the, the anticodon GUG. So if we needed to do number five, it would have been guanine would have gone with cytosine here, adenine would have gone with the uracil there, and that guanine would have gone with the cytosine on the codon. So the codon would be CAC, and CAC is not on there uh, because they didn't ask for that question. But just so you could see uh, what I'm uh, talking about. Let's look at another possible question that they could ask uh, based on something with protein synthesis. So how will a mutation cause a change in the structure of the protein being produced? So this answer that I've uh, typed down here, this is from a memo uh, from a previous exam paper with a similar question. So you can just read through this and then you will see uh, the model answer. So the sequence of the nitrogenous bases on the DNA will change if there's a mutation. So because there's a change in the DNA, it would cause a corresponding change on the mRNA. Because remember, mRNA reads the DNA strand and copies it, uh, or the codons of the DNA.